Hello, I'm Atuba George, and I'm so excited to be bringing God's word to you today. Praise God. Now, before we go into today's broadcast, let's call for that daily bread. And I want you to be so expectant today. Why? Because God is faithful. And he, if he told us to make this demand, then that should tell you he is willing to do his part, which is to supply. All he says, just like Jesus told us to pray, give us this day our daily bread. And that's it. Now, if God is the one telling you to make that request, then you know the story. He will make the supply. Praise God. So with that in your heart, join me as we declare right now. Say, Father, I receive right now my daily bread. It's coming to me freely today in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Now you know uh, some, some, some of God's children have this issue because sometimes when you listen to them talk, you, you realize that there's a problem. They have this issue of receiving from God. There are God's children who just believe that, I mean, how can I just be there say, I'm, I'm, I'm believing God. Hey, remember the Bible says, Without faith, it is impossible to please God. So anything that is done without faith displeases God. Now you see, that's why many people are living far lower than what God expects them to live or where God expects them to be. Many of God's children, they love God. They want to serve God. But you see, because they live faithless lives. What do I mean faithless life? You see, God has planned a system. Now, we, we, we are, we are, I'm sharing with you the same thing we're talking about, you know, all month. How to use the Bible. But you need to understand this. God has planned a system for his children and for his kingdom. If you don't participate in that system, even though you claim to be a child of God, you will be walking outside the kingdom of God. I'll tell you something, and I think I shared that with you last week. Heaven appropriates. What do I mean by that? Everything you are going to need, God has made the right appropriation for it. So the other part is you receiving what has been put aside for you. If you don't receive it and you are outside struggling to get things to work for you, it may work for a while. But then at the end of the day, because you are a child of God, you will be forced to come back and walk according to the kingdom principle. Now, this is the truth. Whether you accept it today or you don't accept it, it's, it's the truth and it's the reality that you're going to face in your life. So if you don't believe that you can, you can believe God and receive from him. Now, this has nothing to do, because sometimes when we talk like this, people think we are talking to um, poor people. We are talking to people who don't have maybe people who don't, who don't have jobs, people who don't have business they are doing. So they 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 should trust God. No, you're, we are talking to everyone because Jesus was talking to everyone. The fact that you have millions in your account doesn't stop you from living by faith. It's just, so when we say living by faith, people just think. Oh God, give me money. I don't have money. No, living by faith simply means that every step you make is in response to the word of God to you. Every step you take, you are taking it responding to God's word that have come to you. Now, how does this translate into um, 
finances or how does this concern finances? Very simple. Every step you take, if you are going to be disciplined to take it by the leading of God, meaning waiting for his word to come to you, then the one who have spoken to you will bankroll it. Did you get that? Oh, must I wait for God to bankroll everything? Yes, you have to. Oh, I have my own money. Hey, you can spend your money in vain. The Bible tells us, except the Lord builds a house, the laborers are laboring in vain. Even though you have the money, if you don't wait for God, and then you go ahead and use your money to do what you're supposed to do, what you think you should do, listen to me, at the end of it, you may finish doing that thing, but God will not dwell in it. That's a, that, that's a problem a lot of God's children have especially those that have money. So you remember Paul said, you know, he was telling, yeah, he was telling Timothy, he said, charge them that are rich in this world, that they should be sober-minded and they should not trust in uncertain riches. What was he talking about? Don't trust in money. Don't trust in money. But rather, Trust in the living God. He used that word. He didn't say trust in God. He said trust in the living God. Now, why did he use the word living God? Because he is alive today and now. How do you trust him? He's saying trust him with everything. How do you trust him with everything? Wait for his instruction for every decision you want to make. Or you want to build a new house. Not just because you have the money. Or you want to buy a house. I have the money. So you start scouting for houses. And then, oh, I like this one. I like this one. How much is it? We have the money now. Let's pay for it. It's not done that way, brothers and sisters. No, it's not done that way. You buy a house like that, that house will eventually land you in trouble. Or that house will eventually become useless to you. So what am I supposed to do? Yeah, go before the Lord. I say, Lord, I'm, I'm thinking it's been coming to my mind to get a house. But I want to show, be sure you're leading me on this. Now, why are you doing that? You are setting yourself in the place where Jesus said, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. See that now? Now, I'm taking time to pray even though I have the money. I'm taking time to pray and ask the Lord, Lord, I want to get a new house. Or I want to get a new car. I have the money in my bank. I've seen the price of the car. I can't afford it. Why do I then need to pray? People think prayer is for people that don't have. That's where they get it wrong. Prayer is for everyone. Whether you have, you don't have, you pray. So you ask the Lord, Lord, this is what I'm thinking. What, what do you think about it? Now, what are you, when you say, what do you think about it? What are you looking for? You are looking for the word of God that will come from his mouth to you. That's what you're looking for. And so you, you begin to pray like that and pray like that. And, and I'll tell you, sometimes he will not answer you immediately. Not because he didn't hear you. But you see, if you're walking with God one thing that you must settle in your mind is that you must have patience. Patience is not just waiting for so long. No, patience is having that mindset of being calm until the Lord tells you what to do. That's what patience is. So it's, 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 it's a character you develop in you. Why haven't you done that thing? Oh, I'm waiting for the Lord to tell me what to. Now I mean this in all seriousness. I don't mean this as people use it for an excuse. You know, they are lazy and they say, God have not told me anything to do. And what have you done about it? What have you done about getting God to speak to you concerning it? See that now? 
because because you 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 ask the Lord, say Lord, this is what I want to do, Lord. Please, I need your help. I need your guidance. What would you, what do you think about this? And then you're waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting. Now, when I mean waiting, I'm not just saying you know you just sit down somewhere and when I mean you do your normal activity. But when it comes to that issue. Your mind is locked on the fact that I have spoken to God about this. So I'm waiting for his response. See that now? The same way you call a friend like, hey, I'm looking for so and so thing. What do you think about it? And he said, okay, you know what? I'll get back to you on that. All right, thank you. You're not going to keep the phone on and be waiting for him. Except he tells you, oh, hold on. Let me let me check something here. I'll give you the answer now. See that now? But then when you say, oh, I'll get back to you. You know that that aspect someone is taking care of it so you go do other things that you know how to do or or you'll feel free to do so that's how you wait on the lord you you've you've muttered out you've spoken to him about it you've said this is what i want to do so now i'm waiting waiting and one day and listen it may not happen like I was telling yesterday, we're going to go back to what we're sharing yesterday. It may not happen like God said, my son, you can go ahead and buy the car. Not necessary. Now, sometimes we're careful using examples because, you know, people will just think, okay, it must be like this. No, not necessarily. But you see, when God speaks to you, you will know. He said, me, I don't know when God speaks to me. If you're a child of God, he speaks to you. And the truth is, you know. Because I've seen people who come to me and say, oh, I don't think God speaks to me. I'm like, why do you say so? And, and when I begin to interact with them, they themselves will start telling me the things that God has been telling them. But what you find out with most believers is that they have not made up their mind to locate God's voice and trust Him. So now I, have, I, I want to do this thing. I have the money to do it. And I'm trusting the Lord. And like, Lord, I, I'm waiting. And then sometimes you wait one day, two days. And, and sometimes it has to do with timing. Now, what do I mean timing? For example, you saw a, a property you like and you have the money to pay for it. And then and you, you for example, asked how much is going for. They told you the price. To do. Are you interested? Yeah. Yeah, I'm kind of interested, but um, can you give me a few days to finalize on it? Like, okay. Now, why did you ask for a few days? Because now you just saw something that moved you. You're not even sure if it's, if it's your spirit that is moved or your flesh that is moved. You're not sure yet. But then you always must give that gap. You must always. Now, that's how to operate a life that have a Lord over you. You don't just say, I like it, I like it, let me take it. No, no, you are conscious that, okay, you know what, fine. But before I make this decision, I, I must talk to someone about it. And then you step back and say, Lord, I, I, I saw that thing I like. What do you think about it? What do you think about it, Lord? And then, you know, and then, now this happens in every, every way, every decision you want to make. Marriage finances everything it, it, it works and there you go by the next day you know people are waiting for you for answer and you're thinking like Lord wow you've not said anything to me yet. I, I need to get back to those people now if the time if you had told them to give me two days, give me three days. Now, truly speaking, if you made a commitment like that, God respects it. He does respect it. And that's why when you're making commitments like that, you have to make commitments that are reasonable. Because God's going to respect it. Now, when you wait for those number of days, if you had told them, look, give me two days, I'll get back to you. And after two days, you at that time and nothing came to your spirit. Nothing came up that is pushing you in that direction. Then what do I do? Simple. You go to the Lord again. Say, Lord, 
I've not heard from you concerning this. I'm taking it that you don't want me to get this thing. So I'm going to leave it. And so I said, must I be leaving everything? Hear me. Because I'm telling you as one who knows the Lord. If he has been getting, trying to get your attention, but you're not responding, if he has been communicating to you about it and you're not responding, now you are about to make a decision which is going to be a mistake. Are you hearing me? So, because you're not sure you've heard him, and then you go back to him and say, Lord, I have not received anything from you. And I told those people, I would call them today. And by today, you've not said anything to me. So, I'm going to call them and tell them, I'm not taking it because it seems you're not interested. I tell you the truth. Between that time, that's if God wants you to have it. Between that time and when you will call them, something is going to come up that will make it clear to you that God wants you to have it. And you know the truth? If God wants you to have that thing, he'll pay for it. Praise God. My time is up today. Now, I, I believe someone needed to hear this because this was like the Holy Spirit just stepping in. Praise God. I, I pray for you now. I, I don't know what decisions you're about to make. I, I pray for you that the Spirit of God will guide your mind and you will not make mistakes in your decision making. I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that the Lord will guide and help you. His voice will come clearly to you. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow.